Hello, how are you? Welcome to another unboxing here on my YouTube channel, Angry Hero 79. I am Sean, the titular Angry Hero 79, which is Angry Hero if you want to do it that way. And uh, we got a lot to get to today because I am going to be opening up two boxes worth of the WCW Ring Announcer Series from Toy Biz. Uh, which I got. I'm trying to get these all in here. Eh! We got two of them. First one's going to have uh, Kevin Nash, Mean Gene Orkland, and Goldberg. And then we got one with uh, Scott Steiner, Michael Buffer, and DDP. Get ready, because I've got a lot of work to do here. But I got these uh, for sale. Uh, not Well, I guess you consider them for sale. Uh, I got them you know, uh, for a pretty good deal, I think sent to me and uh you know just gonna open them up and see how they uh how they square up with some of the other figures in the in the line that i somehow here's the deal i have some of these figures already in these boxes by because i bought them independently but there's some that are gonna be harder to come by if you're trying to hunt them down and i'll point that out you know if you're trying to if you're trying to hunt them down individually so i'll point that out so you can be aware and, uh, you know, for your collections and stuff like that, if you're buying the WCW gimmicks like I am. So, uh, before I get started, though, Universal Soldier on behind me uh, for the Sega Genesis. This, of course, uh, ties in with uh, Goldberg, because Goldberg was in Universal Soldier 2, or Universal Soldier The Return, or whatever the hell they called it, with, uh, I think, Van Damme and... I think it was just Van Damme. They also had the theme song... To the movie, the, the the theme track to the movie was "Crush 'Em" by Megadeth, and they used that for a little bit for uh, Goldberg's uh, theme song in WCW. Because uh, you know, just watching some '99 WCW, and uh, they're actually playing it on the WWE Network, which is pretty remarkable. Because you would think that would get scrubbed out somehow, but nah, they actually are uh, playing it, so that's kind of dope. But that being said, let's go ahead and open up these damn things. Let's start off with Goldberg. On the package here, you can see, I'm trying not to get the glare on my lights here, but you can see it comes with Kevin Nash, Mean Gene Orkeland, and Goldberg. WCW Wrestlers. WCW Crab logo with a ring is in place of the eye. You got the picture, you got some photos of Goldberg on the front, Mean Gene, and uh, Big Sexy. It says here, exclusive six inch Mean Gene Orkeland. So, uh, as I'll point out, there are only two Mean Gene Orkelands in this entire line, and one of them comes with this joint here. So, on the back here, we got some, uh, just some literature, some more pictures, as well as some literature about the wrestlers and some of their finishers. Mean Gene doesn't get anything. Screw Mean Gene. He didn't have a finisher, so he doesn't get anything. But, uh, Kevin Nash, 7 foot 1, height, weight 367. Uh, signature move, the jackknife powerbomb. And then Goldberg, six foot four, 285 pounds. And signature move, the jackhammer. So that is what you guys got for uh, WCW. And it does give you some, uh, like, a, like a, I don't know, let me look at this thing. It's a friggin' war and peace. It's a lot, a lot to cover here, but I'm going to read it. Goldberg became the most feared man of WCW as he demolished every opponent that stood in his way. It seems as though no challenger would ever be able to defeat the Rising Star. Kevin Nash thought differently. He repeatedly challenged Goldberg to a match for the belt during his interviews with B.G. Norkeland. See, it actually ties in. Actually, I didn't realize that this made sense to bring Mean Gene into this pack and not include Michael Buffer or some other announcer, preferably Tony Schiavone. But, uh, anyways... He repeatedly challenged Goldberg to a match with the, for the belt during his interviews with Mean Gene Orkeland. The two, star, two superstars finally clashed at Starcade. After a grueling match in which each warrior was pushed to his limits, Nash received a controversial win and ended Goldberg's undefeated record. Controversial because Scott Hall showed up and zapped him with a cattle prod. The two warriors again battled at Spring Stampede, but this time Goldberg jackhammered and pinned the big man to avenge his loss at the hands of the giant killer. Now you can recreate the legendary feud between 
end matches between Goldberg and Big Sexy Kevin Nash. And if you want, just have DG, me and Gene stand there doing the announcing. I, I think that's actually really neat that they include a Mean Gene here. Like if you're if you're doing a fig fed, you could really like go out of your way to just recreate the stuff. I mean, WWF did that with. Uh, well, WWF and WWE did that with a lot of stuff. I mean, you had Jim Ross, you had, uh, yeah, obviously had Mean Gene and the LJN line. So, I mean, yeah, I think that's really cool that they actually get around to doing that. You get managers and, you know, and particularly uh, ring announcers. So, you know, and it, it, as 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 lame as they look in the package, it's necessary. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. Tape on this is uh, it's beat up, but who cares? Because I'm just going to open the damn thing. My garbage man must think I'm nuts because they see all the old uh, packages sitting there. I'll just open it up, these vintage toys. Coming out smooth. What the fuck? Ah! There we go. So it's on a blister card. Here's how that looks. That card should be able to come right off with my knife. Ugh, it's a mess. So there you go. That's your... The back of the car looks like. It's blistered with all three guys on it. Untouched for 22 years. It smells like the late 90s. Take me back. If I could travel back in time with this smell of these figures, I would be very happy. Just for a little bit. I'd come back here. I got stuff to do. So let's, uh, let's start off with Mean Gene. Mean Gene, of course... He's an announcer, so he doesn't have much articulation going on here. In this particular one, he's got just a bendable. He's got bendable arms, but they don't really bend too far down. So you do this. You could back. You know, you could kind of have this going on. So if he wants to talk to a Kevin Nash, you know, we'll uh, we'll show that off. Actually, I'll show that off right now. It's like, hey, big man, what do you got to say? Actually, I can bring that down a little bit. Kevin Nash, what do you got to say? Actually, that's that's a perfect pose. The finger I don't understand. This is actually be him telling somebody to put that cigarette out. It's like, hey, put that cigarette out. That would be that would be uh, appropriate. That's actually a good. If if you're trying to recreate that moment from uh, summer, uh, Ring, not, not, Royal Rumble, nineteen ninety two, you know, you could do that. But here's the kicker thing. So, Mean Gene also comes with the smash and slam ring and it comes with me gene and the variation on that is dark pants and blue tie the one that just opened gray pants and uh, red tie. same figure just different uh, colors even though lapels are colored So you can see that, or the pocket squares. What the hell am I talking about? Pocket squares. Uh, I didn't have the ring, uh, the thing, uh, the microphone come with my Smash and Slam one that I bought separately, but now I do. So now I could, you can interchange that. So, uh, but everything else is the same, aside from the pants and the ties and the pocket squares. Same figure. The one I just opened's got a little bit more of a duller sheen than uh, this one here. I guess I guess if you're pointing out that sort of thing, but yeah, and it's really, it's it's ridiculous sometimes because sometimes you'll find these and they'll have the jacket taken off, and it's like, why are you bother to take the jacket off? Because the arms aren't going to change; the arms are going to stay the same. You know, it's not like you could take it off and just have a white me Gene in a white shirt. I mean, he's always wearing; he's always looks like this. So, but yeah, there's your mean Gene. It's a Spider-Man meme. I also just thinking about it, I kind of would have loved to have a Bobby Heenan. In that line that would have been actually a pretty nice addition so kevin nash this is the kevin that the kevin nash that comes with the with the pack mine kind of has some weird knees going on here if you could see that doesn't want to bend all the way i mean you could still do a big boot he'd have to really get some height i think you i think you i think he would hurt himself to be honest if he's doing that this kevin nash of course is just a repaint of the one that comes from the smash and slam line as well and there were two variations on that particular figure but this one's got the same move 
squeeze his arms, and he's supposed to... Well, actually, it's weird, because it's... Should be more like that. Because he's supposed to be able to do the power bomb, so... You're supposed to be able to... Yeah, like that. So here's the deal. Kevin Nash had just opened, right? Nash on the stomach, on the outfit, black fringe on pants, red elbow pads, red wrist tape. The smash and slam comes with that comes with the referee. Nash on the tights, black wrist paint, black wrist tape, black elbow pads with some blue striation or whatever, and uh, red fringe on pants. And uh, also, you could see some variation on the hair. Uh, this has got some blonde highlights, whereas this one does not. So this is the more common one. And then we have this one. This is the one that says Nash with black. Actually, I wanted to make sure I had this right because I knew I was missing. I knew I was missing one. But, okay, so getting back to this. Black pants, Nash on shirt. Black elbow pads, black wrist tape. Okay? So you got the black one here. And then, last but not least, you have one red fringe on pants, black elbow pads, black wrist tape, NWO on gear, and uh, no blonde highlights. This one has blonde highlights, by the way. So, these are the Smash Slam figures, uh, variations. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna show it right now, because I don't want to be here all day trying to talk about Kevin Nash's. I'll do that in another video. But as you can see, variations on the red pants, variations on the black pants. Both of the and it's so and but but if you're looking for the one that comes out of this this announcer package, red elbow pads, red wrist tape, so and, and blonde highlight. So that's how you know. So that's that's uh that's Nash, man. A whole lot going on with Nash here. And then lastly for this particular one, William Bill Goldberg. I have this one separately as well. I just got this one recently. It's actually kind of hard to track down, but somebody had it. Uh, fresh out of the package, though. Feels nice and tight. And uh, this one... Oh God, I hope I don't break this. This one's from the Smash and Slam line, which is uh, known to be able to do the uh, jackhammer. It's supposed to be able to do the jackhammer. And this is the original one that comes with the, the, the Smash and Slam. As you can see, uh, skin tone a little bit different. Lighter blue eyes on the Smash and Slam. Different chest hair. Less, uh, more, less, more chest hair on this one, less on this one. And of course, the black pants. Because you remember Goldberg wearing his uh, black jeggings. <laughs> but everything else is the same here. You know, he's got the, he's got the, you know, the gloves and the elbow pad and the tattoo. And uh, the action is the same. Can Goldberg do this to himself? See, let's see. Okay. So, actually, hooks in pretty good, especially if you're using the other Goldberg. Another Goldberg here. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay. He's too heavy. I could do this with the other guys, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, you can do this with some of the later guys. But it works. I swear to God. I swear to God it works. Here's Goldberg. Smash and Slam variant. All right. Let's get to this other one. This is the Michael Buffer version of uh, the Ring Announcer series with uh, Scott Steiner and DDP. WCW wrestlers on the top, as I point out. Comes with an exclusive Mike six inch Michael Buffer voice of the champ the voice of champions figure and uh, everything looks the same on the front pretty much everything is the same on the back as well on the back here we've got uh, Scott Steiner six foot one two forty with uh, signature move Steiner recliner and then DDP is six foot five two fifty three with uh, signature move diamond cutter. The feud between these two wrestling superstars began as Pop, Big Papa Pump announced to the thousands of fans attending Monday Nitro that Kimberly Page should only be with a superior man of his caliber and not someone as lowly as Diamond Dallas Trash. I do like that detail. That's fun. DDT. Hey, how about that? Uh, Scott Steiner challenged Page to a match with the victor getting to spend 30 days with Kimberly 
and enraged DDP accepted his challenge to wrestle at the next pay-per-view event. I believe that was at Super Brawl 99. Uh, before the match could take place, Steiner kidnapped Kimberly and threw her out of a speeding limousine. Yeah, that was pretty wild. This further enraged the People's Champion. Their conflict came to a head when the two Titans finally collided in the ring after the introduction by the world-famous ring announcer Michael Buffer. See, we're fitting it in there. Uh, the action began. Uh, each wrestler used their incredible strength, agility, and wrestling skill to win the, try to win a match. After a long, grueling battle, Steiner finally caught Paige in his Steiner recliner submission hold and won the match. I believe it had something to do with the exposed turnbuckle and DDP hitting that beforehand. After a few weeks of recuperation, DDP returned and faced Steiner again, only this time Paige made Steiner feel the bang and defeated him with his signature move, the Diamond Cutter. Recreate the intense matches between these two wrestling superstars with this exclusive collector set. Let's open it up. No tape on this one. But I'm assuming the seal. These, these figures are pretty good in the package. Wow. But yeah, see brand new seal on here. The other one actually had a little bit of a break of the seal. But here they are in the blister. You got... DDP, or uh, Steiner, Buffer, DDP. In the package. Now, let's start with, uh, let's start with DDP, or let's start with uh, Steiner. This figure much like every other Rick Ste or sorry Scott Steiner figure that was released that wasn't uh, a Grip and Flex, Grip and Flex, Grip and Flex is just a variation on this, the Scott Steiner Ring Fighters, okay? And there are many variations of this figure just with different outfits. This is the only one that was in white, the Ring Fighters. I have his, I have the shirt from the TNT the one that I just did a video on, the uh, Toys and Tattoos. There are a lot of different ones that are in black. This one is unique because the just like with, I, I have the TNT one, that one just has Big Papa Pump on the back. Okay, This has Big Papa Pump on the back, but Red Star on the front, and also, you know, I gotta take note here, Superstar, or Super, yeah, Superman logos, which... Uh, it's pretty fun because these are these are uh, Toy Biz Marvel products, but uh, Superman logo is on the tights here. Uh, so that's how you know you got one from here. Now I can't. I believe the other Ring Fighters. There's other variations on that are which are in black, and I don't have the other ones. I know that the Ring Fighters one that I believe is silver, a silver star with the silver Superman logo on it. And then there's the New Blood one, and I flicked on just one other one that I might be missing. But basically, yeah, there was a whole lot of variations on this one, on this one figure. They uh, just redid it. I mean, uh, the the glasses are different. Um, you know, the glasses have the white trim on it, and also the beard is different on the black ones because they have the stripe in the middle as opposed to the stripes on the on the sides on the white one here. That's uh, yeah. That's um, Scott Steiner. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't doesn't do anything. Kind of a shame, because he figured he'd be able to do something. But you know, I guess you could say, if you wanted to put somebody in a Steiner recliner, I mean, what's he gonna do? Steiner recliner. It's happening. Sure it is. No wait, maybe do this. Yeah, more like a crossface chicken wing, I guess. So that's Big Papa Pump. Let's go to DDP. I already have this one. This one is significant because it's just basically a smash and slam DDP. And so there was the one that came with the shirt. Yeah, the DDP shirt and the jeans, the blue jeans. And then there was this one that came with just the black jeans. But then there's this one that came with the black jeans with a more of a... Uh, uh, glossier shine and it has his DDP logo on the side of the tights which actually makes sense because this is around the time when these figures came out he was in the triad this is what he was wearing so this is kind of the only way you can get that 
Uh, horrible figure design, though. I mean, there was probably... I, mean, I know you wanted to get him to do this. Do the diamond cutter. And it looks great if you're just posing him. But for playability, I mean, you can't really do shit. I mean, you kind of could do a diamond cutter. <laughs> I'm going to break a finger this way. So that's DDP. Not much else to say about that because he's kind of jacked. Last but not least, Michael Buffer. Now, not the same mold as Gene here, which actually I think is great that they did that because Gene obviously has a different physique than Michael Buffer. Same kind of arms, though. Well, at least this this left arm or this right arm. Left arm is different, but he's not doing a point. He doesn't get to do a point. He gets to do a, do, do, do something like that. I think it's great that Michael Buffer gets a few figures. I mean, not that the guy could use the money because the guy is insanely rich. And WCW paid him so much friggin' money just to come in and say ready, ready to rumble. It's ridiculous that this guy got, you know, because he's, sometimes he's not even that good. You know, when you watch him back, you're just like, ah, he's not that good. I mean, he was popular, you know, as enough at the time, you know, being uh, being that guy. But yeah, you know, tuxedo outfit, hair looks the same, likeness is pretty good, tan, tan is kind of spot on here. Microphone's the same as jeans, and uh, one thing about him is that he actually can open up his jacket. So if you want him to, because jeans just is kind of open, but this one you can kind of open up, and uh, it actually does have some... Some button snaps on it. So that's it, really. I mean, not much else to say about this one, about the uh, buffer here. Just glad I have it. I'm still, you know, I, I figured when I, I did the math in my head, it was 33%. No, it was good. I did the math in my head and realized how much I was paying for those two, two uh, on card, uh, which I got from a, from a Facebook group. I just kind of realized it's like, well, in order to hunt each of these other individual ones down, especially that Nash, because I'd probably be trying to find that Nash and just the variation on that Nash would have been a pain in the ass trying to find. Um, but I'd probably be spending more trying to hunt those down than I would, you know, and that's including like shipping and everything. Whereas this was like, you know, a good deal without shipping. You know, I, I didn't have to pay shipping on it. So I figured I, I made out pretty good. But yeah, that's uh, that's the ring announcer series from WCW. Just those two packs. Uh, thanks for joining me today. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Angry Hero Sean, and you can find more on this channel at Angry Hero Seventy Nine on YouTube. And also, you could uh, rate and subscribe to this channel. You know, give a thumbs up to this video if you like it. Uh, tell your friends that you want to see. You know, that you, you're watching videos of a forty-year-old man opening up twenty-year-old figures, and he's having a great time doing it. And he's playing, he's got some video games behind him. This is, this is a lot of value proposition here with these videos. But anyways, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. I'll talk to you again next time.